Hello everyone, welcome to the Stereo Podcast. Tonight I'm joined by Chavis. How are you going, Chavis? Hey, Adolf, how are you, man? Good, mate. Good Thanks for you. coming on there again. Yeah. It's oh, uh, much appreciated. Wonderful to be here again. All right. Yeah. We've had a quite a interesting day mm-hmm. and uh, uh, let's say pleasant afternoon. We both attended a cacao ceremony. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, cacao ceremony for anyone out there is really just a meditation ceremony with a soundscape and you have a very fortunate... Uh, I wouldn't say privilege, but you get to drink uh, cacao, which is a fantastic thing in itself with the taste. But yeah, it's uh, quite an interesting substance. So mm. yeah, so we've just come from that. So we thought we'd have a bit of a chat about um, that in this podcast and yeah, we'll see how we go from there. Yeah. Yeah, the experience I found with cacao is, um, you know, obviously we talk about the science of it. It, mm. um, it releases dopamine, serotonin. Through it um, heightens your sensation mm-hmm. throughout your skin and your body. Um, I'm not an expert on the science of it, but that's what I led to understand. More or less, that's yeah, what goes on anyway. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's it. Yeah. So um, we both we had this experience where we we shared our intention. Um, we went into the meditation with a beautiful soundscape. Um, that's something I really noticed. The sound mm. was like the, the songs and um, that were played today were just. Mm. on point they oh were weren't they yeah. weren't they they just and like um, Willow said that uh, they are designed with certain frequencies to resonate with your brain waves mm. and bring your brain waves to certain wavelengths yeah um, I don't know delta waves beta waves beta and yeah all those sort of things that um, yeah, I'm not an expert on but I know a little bit about them mm. um, and yeah the, the ceremony um, it definitely it brought up, it allowed me to bring things up and let things come out. I think, I think what, as human beings, these things always want to come up. Sure. I think they're always there trying to come up, but we either distract ourselves from yeah. them. Um, we resist them. We, we're always so busy. And these things just sit there and fester and they build up. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think where they sit is in our hearts. Mm. And, and this is what keeps us away from our hearts because they build up and sudden and there comes a time when you know you're, you go from being a child where you're always in your heart and, and you're mm. emotional and you um, you're living life and everything and then think somewhere through adolescence and you know they say that adolescents get really emotional and everything um, there comes a time where it becomes too overwhelming to be in your heart. Mm. And you move up here, mm. and I think that's where we spend most of our lives as adults. We're Is that forced here. upon us though, as well? I think through so. Through the yeah. social structures, and I, especially the schooling yeah. system. Oh, absolutely. Where it's, where it's, we're mm. told not to be from here, and mm. like if you're going to be a productive member of society, you need to, you need to start thinking from you here. You need to start thinking yeah, here. Living from you need here. to start learning maths. Yeah. And different, you know, certain topics which sure. which keep us up here. Yeah, exactly. You know. Yeah. Um, it's difficult, you know, the, the Australian curriculum, as a teacher myself, it, it's all centred around literacy and maths now, mm. which are topics up here. Yeah. And literacy can be creative, sure. but they want you to be structured. Yeah. And there's a place for structure. There's definitely a place for structure, which I've got some notes here. I want to talk about that later. Mm. But um, the creativity comes from here, mm. and that's what we're losing. And I think that the schooling system is designed to bring us from here to mm. here and I don't know whether it's a conscious thing or whether it's just people don't know what they're doing they don't know that's the effect but that's the effect that's what's yeah. happening we're bringing teenagers children from, and it happens in the teens from here to here mm. and you know when children get to teen you know, they start off they go to school as young kids and they, they love school and by the time they get to their early teens they're over it sure because it is is conflicting yeah. there's a conflict within them that you know and it brings up all these emotions and pain. And, and I think children want to just stay here and have fun. And as adults, we mm. want to be here. And we spend the rest of our lives trying to get back to here. Yeah. So, mm. what, yeah, I think what it, whatever that cause is, I think it's something that needs to be looked into a bit more. Mm. What it, whether it's like a conscious thing made by our society or if it's just the way it is, who mm. really knows? But if we can take a step back from mm. what we are just mm-hmm. speaking about before that, about distracting ourselves, I think that's an important <clears throat> topic to... Look at it as well, because I think 
the the way we distract ourselves from uh, living from the heart mm-hmm. is a real issue, and mm. I'm definitely guilty of it. So like, and it's something that's a real mm-hmm. battle, and it's something that really came to me in this ceremony this afternoon was how, um, especially desires, are my real distraction from mm. getting myself, um, preventing myself from really living in the heart. Mm-hmm. Like, if I've got something going on in the head and I need to know I need to bring into the heart, instead I'll just distract myself by um, thinking about like a woman's body or you know mm. thinking about um, a sporting event it or something like that yeah, it can be anything to just dis- yeah. yeah anything yeah. to distract mm-hmm. it and, and not that there's anything wrong about thinking about those things mm-hmm. but when you know there's a point in time where you really need to um, bring something into the heart and more often than you're not more often than not you distract yourself mm. through some means it could be drugs as well mm-hmm. um, that's where we need to do better as a society to I encourage believe. that I yeah. think I know I know yeah what you're talking about there because um, through my meditation experience today I found the same thing I was thinking at first the normal sort of thoughts that I think of day to day were coming to me and they're all external they're mm. about the world around me they're thoughts like you said sport some of women come into it um, things at work work mm. is often a, a source that's of a frustration for yeah. many people yeah. so that's something you're constantly thinking about and I mm. think if you're thinking about something a lot then it, something is not right about that because mm. you know, if you're not not at peace with it, I heard a great some great wisdom one from a friend recently. He said, you know, if I go to bed at night and there's something on my mind that I'm stewing over, he goes, that thing in my life is not right. Sure. You know. Yeah. And he knows, and I thought that's great advice. You know. Yeah. And it's the same. You know, there's things I was thinking about that were coming to me during the meditation, and I know there's things that aren't right, but sometimes you have to fix the situation or you become okay with the situation and mm. sometimes you, you can't change it and there's things in life we can't change so the way i found in the ceremony for me to start to accept it i had to catch myself in the way i was thinking about it mm. i had to try and turn that thinking back in and on to me sure and ask questions to myself like okay so why is this bothering me mm. and then i you know the <coughs> answers they come up as soon as you ask the question the answer comes up yeah you know, why am I thinking this? Mm. Why do I feel so bad about this? Mm. Why am I frustrated? Why do I feel anger? Mm. As soon as you ask those questions within, yeah. you're asking here and the answers will come to you. And the answers can sometimes be uncomfortable. Yeah. You know? But like my friend Steph, my good friend Steph mm. says, uh, he's got a great term, the quality of a life is determined by the quality of your questions. Yeah, so it's, good, that's great. If yeah. you really like question different aspects of life around you and of yourself, mm. If you've got good quality questions, mm-hmm. then that really dictates a, uh, a better life or a, a better life because then you can look into mm-hmm. different facets of life based upon those questions mm. rather than thinking of, um, I can't even think of a shitty question off the top of my head now, but things oh, that don't matter. Things that, things how, that how matter. am I going to like um, save up the money to buy the next boat? Yeah. Right. Those Stuff are shitty like questions. Sure. You know, yeah. those are shitty questions, mm. but... People ask them all the time. Mm. You're right. Absolutely, that's great wisdom. You know, ask the right yeah. questions. Okay, so if you're if that's your question, yeah. why? Do, how can I save up the next money for the next boat? You should be turning that into. So why is it that that's so important to me? Sure. Why yeah. is this buying this boat so important to me? Yeah. And then you know what? That opens up a whole channel of different aspects of yourself that will guide you here. Yeah. Definitely. I think you know. Definitely. And that that's it. That there is. We've all got the pain there, and that's what it is. And um. I was having a thought today and I thought, you know, where does this pain originate from? What's at the core of it? Mm. And this this <clears throat> brings this into a whole new ballpark now. But I think um, my experience, my and my opinion on this, and it's just an opinion, I don't know, I don't know if people will agree with me, but I think every human being, at the core of our hearts, there's a deep loneliness. We all feel lonely, every single one of us. You know, and that's why we mm. crave connection. Mm. We we want to connect with other people, mm. you know. I like, how do we punish people as yeah. by putting them in solitude? Yeah, the solitude. Um, so that, that's like the yeah. ultimate punishment. Yeah, they go crazy, yeah. you know. And yeah. I think mobile phones. Everyone's on their mobile phones. They're always on them these mm. days, especially the younger generation. And I think it's just they're craving a connection. Yeah. They could be out in the street by themselves, but they want to Facebook someone because it's sure. just that in their head, it's they're connecting to another person. Yeah, and it's through their phone, you know. And while we, we can all see that that's not healthy because mm. if you become addicted to that, you're missing out on the real world mm. and possible real connections with people around you. Mm. But they, that's what drives them to that. They're craving that connection. Sure. Um, and there's nothing wrong with that. We, we're all here to connect. Yeah, well, we're, but, we're community, communal exactly. beings. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And I think even today, like the ceremony, you know, 
we could all just sit at home by ourselves and meditate. And mm. you know, I do that often, and I'm sure you do as well. And we do our own meditations. So really, there should be no, no nothing necessary about going to a ceremony with other people. But yeah. we want to do it. Sure. We want to do it because you're connecting while you're healing and you're showing your vulnerability to others and you're experiencing mm. other people's vulnerability. You're learning from them. It's amplifying. And it is, yeah. yeah. And those ceremonies, um, they're, I think they're all about connection as well. Mm. And that's that's what fills that void. Mm. And we talked about distractions earlier. Everyone wants to fill that void. And there's so many distractions created for us in society. Mm. And it could be the sport. It could be women. Like there's pornography everywhere on TV, mm. advertising everywhere. Because people are craving something to fill the void. Sure. And these things offer quick fixes. Yeah. They offer a quick feeling of pleasure away from that feeling what's inside that mm. everyone wants to run away from. Yeah, yeah, you know? definitely. Yeah. And what ceremony, meditation, healing's about is bringing ourselves back to that place and being comfortable with it. Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, it's and I think it's something that is more valuable now than maybe any point in our history, mm-hmm. our known history at least mm. anyway, because we do live in a... Um, in a society and structure, it's very... I mean, we live in these large cities where we've never felt more isolated from mm. each other. Hives, they like. Yeah, they? exactly. And mm-hmm. we, we're very much separated. So there's like... It's almost like... That's like the resistance that we need, though, mm-hmm. to bring us all back together and to mm. like want to um, connect with other people mm. and want to be with other people. But some some people really struggle with that. And also some people... Actually, there's this guy... There's an author called Stephen Pressfield who mm-hmm. wrote... Um, what was the book you wrote? Uh, the war, the war, the war of art. It's like a play on words from the art of war. The oh, cool, book. yeah, yeah. He called it the war of art. Mm-hmm. But um, he was, I was listening to him in an interview, and he's saying how he actually likes living in cities because sometimes he likes to be on his own. He does, you mm. know, if he lived in a small country town somewhere, yeah, everyone he'd be knows getting bugged by all the yeah. time. Yeah. Hey, John, mm-hmm. how you going, man? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. And there's a great thing about that. But yeah, sometimes you want that solitude. Yeah, you do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, I live in a fairly dense area, Mm. but I can walk down to the shops and back and pass 20 people. And and, yeah, Yeah. I'm over. That's right. It's great. And, you know, I can do a bit of a nod and hey, go on. But I don't have to like get bailed up by them. Hey, what's going on? And sometimes you want that. Sometimes you want that. Yeah. 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 So it's, but when the, the, the great benefit we have of living in a city is we get to choose, we get a lot of choices. Okay. I want to go to this Mm -hmm. group thing or that group thing and that time yep. and that time so yeah exactly and the reality is as much as we look at the world's problems we are living in good times we are we've got we're living so in the best ma- of times we really. are we are we've got so much like if you want to go down to the street if you say you like indian food mm-hmm. and you're loving it and the food is fantastic you go down the street from five minutes down there you've got good options sure now a hundred years ago you couldn't do that no. if you liked indian food yeah. you had to go to india after india yeah, yeah. yeah. And, <laughs> and these days jump on a plane you're there it's mm. that travel overseas 100 years ago yeah. was near impossible it yeah. was such a hard thing to do no one had the money for it because it was so expensive sure so we i think we take that for granted we do we always take it for granted and um we always look at the world's problem and we think you know it's easy to say we're living in the worst times right now mm. because there is more greed there is more corruption there is and we seem to be more controlled there's more of a police state on us now than ever mm. but i think that's just the the payoff having the good things, you know? Yeah, and there's also, there's less war as well. I mean, there is still mm. war in the world, but there's yeah. less people going to war. There's That's less right. people dying from more war. Pe- it's, it's not as romantic as it used to be. Whereas, yeah, because people understand what it's really yeah, about now. That's, that's why. right, you know? Yeah. And if you <laughs> choose to join the army and go to war, it can come from a naivety more than anything sure. else. You know? It's not this whole honor yeah. where you go and defend your king or whatever yeah. like it was in medieval days sure. you know? it or was, even like yeah. 60 years ago 60 years ago yeah. it was you know honor to defend your country yeah. you know? and you believed in what you did mm. now obviously the soldiers go over there and they believe in what they do but I don't think they quite comprehend the reality mm. um, a lot of them played Call of Duty as teenagers and thought yeah I want to go and do that and mm. they join up go over and do that come back post traumatic stress disorder and yeah. you know, that's their life but they made that choice yeah but even if they uh, have Maybe even if they haven't had that sort of background, they might go into it thinking, you know, I'm doing it for my country. Some of them might, yeah, exactly. And they do, and and that's a very noble thing. Mm. And I definitely respect um, soldiers who do do it for that reason. Mm -hmm. I think it's unfortunate. What they might not realize is that who they're actually doing it for, who they're actually giving their lives for. Yeah, they don't see the bigger picture. They're not, they're not, you know, they're doing it for people who don't give a fuck about them. Mm -hmm. And they're the ones that get to sit back on a leather couch 
raking in the money through their through hard their, work, yeah, their, their hard labors. work and their life. Yeah, yep, exactly. I saw a um a video recently. You might have seen as well of a soldier. He's a returned veteran from one of, in the U.S. Marines, and he had an epiphany. Woke mm. up, and now he's going around spreading news about like what war is and. Uh, and yeah, is that Adam Koshek? Could Koshek be. He's or talking about guy? American Sniper. He was interviewing people who had just seen America. Yeah, it was at Adam Adam Kosher. Or, yeah, I watched him. a bit of that as well. Yeah, yeah. and it, yeah. it was into all these. It was amazing. He just probed them with questions. He just mm. asked questions. Didn't push any view. Just got them to think about what they saw. Like, did you see American Sniper? What would you think? Oh, it was great. It was the guy was a hero. Mm. Oh, he, he saved so many lives. And he goes, okay, so he was a hero. What was he doing to be a hero? Well, he you know, he's defending the homeland. And he goes, okay, so the people he killed, weren't they defending their homeland as well? He yeah. came over from America, went to Iraq, to their country, to yeah. their country, and these people were fighting him and the US troops. Yeah. Weren't they defending their homeland? Does that make them heroes as well? Oh, no, 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 that's different. Well, how is it different? Yeah. And he just kept questioning them. And it was so funny to see the how they've been conditioned to believe yeah. what they believe. And a few people got really defensive, but a couple he was able to make them really think yeah. And open their mind a little bit to it, and and they asked him. So you went over to Iraq. Why did you go? He goes, well, I was basically I was asleep back then. I was, mm. you know, I went there, thought I was doing a good thing, but then you know, I woke up, yeah. and realized that this isn't the right thing to do because I'm not fighting for the country. I'm fighting for a bunch of bankers and yeah. rich elite people. You know, sure. So it was really good to see his um, awakening, and you know. It can happen to anybody at any time. Yeah, and he's been at it for about, I first heard of him about mm-hmm. maybe three years mm. ago, and he's not the only one. There's, what The great thing about what's happening in today's world and what's been happening over the last decade is this sharing of um, experiences and sharing mm. ideas. Mm-hmm. Like 50 years ago, you never would have had someone from war come and question yeah. people within America. They would have called him unpatriotic and they would That's have right. tried to like mm. you know burn him at the stake. Mm-hmm. But there's a lot more... Um, liberal thought amongst Mm -hmm. uh, people that have been to war amongst especially in American culture and Mm -hmm. a lot more people being um, open to it and taking on board what people are saying especially that he's been he's been over there and he's served it gives massive credence it gives massive credence Americans really respect their veterans well the the people do the government might not because there's not a lot of systems in place for return veterans but the people respect people. Yeah. You know, and as they should. Too, as right. they should. Yeah. And they really have a, they hold them in high esteem. Mm. And if it was you and all, you or I went over there and started preaching, oh, the war's shit, rah, rah, rah. They would go, have some respect for the veterans, you guys. And they wouldn't listen to us. But the yeah. fact that he's been, yeah, he's already earned that respect. Sure. And people will listen to him. Sure. You know? Yeah, definitely. Mm. Definitely. Yeah, do you, do you think that's changing though? So I think even people that haven't been in the military are now, like there's more and more people standing up. It's got out of that hippie, you know, it was always like a massive association with hippies in the yeah. 60s and 70s. Mm-hmm. Like, People that were anti war. Oh, you yeah, hippies. Hippie, yeah. But you, they, paved the, they paved the way. Yeah. Well, they if paved the way. If it wasn't for them, yeah. we wouldn't be where we are now and people wouldn't be so open to that idea because you know, yeah. they've got people thinking back then. It did, yeah. And now they, they might have done it in the wrong manner, though, I think. There was a lot of activism through anger back then. And, oh. uh, you know, as long as what they tried to say it was peaceful, but there was a lot of uh, anger. Yeah, but it now it's more just conversation. It's yeah. more conversation. It's, it's like we're talking now. Yeah. Like you'll see other people on the internet having the same conversation mm-hmm. we're having. Like, are we really sending soldiers over there for the? What's, yeah. Who are they actually going over who there for? Who are they fighting for? Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. You know, I just think you know, one one day. I mean, it probably won't happen in our lifetime. But I mean, armies will get so small that they won't even be able to fight big wars because even yeah. our defence force in Australia is yeah. shrinking. We are we are struggling to recruit numbers. Yeah. People just realise that. That's not a way of life. No. There's no need for that. No, exactly. You know? So I think it's it, it's the numbers are dwindling yeah. and it's going to get to a point where it's just militaries aren't needed. Well, it was, must have been about three or four months ago. You, I think you commented on it. I put a post up about like on my Yahoo account, my, mm-hmm. my email account. I just kept, for like two weeks, I just kept getting bombarded, bombarded by recruitment ads from oh, really, yeah. the Australian Defence mm-hmm. Force. But through a... Um, through an employment agency, mm-hmm. you know, they were trying to recruit people, like, mm-hmm. just bombarded with that after that. I was like, mm-hmm. what the fuck's going on here? I think it was you that said, yeah, <laughs> Big like, Les. They're just dwindling, yeah. like, of course. I mean, they're yeah. having to put all these advertisements mm-hmm. on. You know, the conscription, fingers crossed, knock on wood, I don't think that'll ever happen again. No, I don't, exactly. So I because don't, they can't yeah. conscript, yep. they're trying this ad campaign. And, yeah, you know, and they're aiming at, I mean, they've picked their market, people straight out of high school, and they've try to advertise the gap year, you know, yeah. go there for one we'll, year. Well, we'll pay for your university. Yeah, and all that kind of thing. Yeah. You know, and that's appealing. Oh, that's yeah. appealing to people, but 
And I just don't think it, they're selling it like they, mm. because people were just thinking, well, why would I want to do that? Yeah. I mean, I know I talk to students at school and they think they would want to do it, but they want to do it for reasons because they play Call of Duty mm. and they think it'll be fun. But I think eventually they get older and mature and they think, you know what, that's not worth my life. No. <laughs> you know, just to go around and shoot some guns and yeah. all that sort of thing. But yeah, we were down to, you know, I think when I was in the Navy, it was like 14,000 people were supposed to have. I joined up and there was like 11,000. Eight years later when I got out, we're down to 8,000. Really? So, okay. Yeah, Is that nationwide? That's nationwide defense yeah. members. Yeah. I mean, there should have been 14,000. Sure. So we were right down to low. Yeah. People just weren't joining up. Yeah. Yeah. There's yeah. no appeal to it. Good. Yeah. It's, it's good. good. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Good, you know. If you're thinking about joining any of the defense forces, just don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. That's it. Um, yeah. that, that's what leaves me optimistic for the future though as well with talking about um, what's it called the sniper or American sniper yeah American it's sniper I mean yeah. that title in itself is propaganda right, yeah, written all over it absolutely. the whole Fucking movie is Clint like, Eastwood mm-hmm. right wing you know they've got like a big name yeah, Hollywood mm-hmm. star Bradley Cooper mm-hmm. who I've lost a lot of respect for oh was he the sniper was he Bradley Cooper Bradley Cooper yeah oh man Hang- I thought Mr. He Hangover Mr. Hangover go back to the Hangover dude yeah, exactly yeah. and um, but what's happened I mean I, I can remember back when I was like 19 when Saving Private Ryan came out I mean you could call that an anti-war movie um, but American Snipe is definitely like a propaganda movie. It's propaganda. Movie. It's absolute propaganda. But for right. the first time with these, you know, there's a lot of propaganda movies back through the 40s, 50s and mm. 60s and 70s but as this well. This one they've needed. This is desperation. This is desperation. Yeah. But yeah. now the public are like, you know, or a good they've portion of public loved are, it again, you know? Well, they've loved it, but they are another part of the population are like, hang on, this hang is on a, second. a bit fucked up. Yeah, you know, exactly, like yep. Seth Rogen, the, act, the comedian, he was like, you know, this is a bit bullshit. Mm-hmm. And Joe Rogan's talking about mm-hmm. his Duncan Trust is like, Hang on, it's not quite right. But on the polar opposite, you've got like these kids, these teenagers coming out of the movie watching it going, fuck yeah, I'm going to go kill me some Muslims, you know? That's right, yeah. That's what actually what they'll tweet. I know, I've seen that. It's it's terrible. But that would have always been there though. It's just it can be more amplified now. But but now what's happened is... they've tapped into that. They've tapped into that, but there's people that are against it also Mm -hmm. have a voice now where they never used to. exactly. I mean, as Russell Brand says, you know, this society celebrates the darkest aspects of our own nature. We do. And that's the thing, you know, these people will go and see that movie and if they've already got a little bit of, you know, oh, a bit suspicious of those Muslims or whatever, and there's a little bit of that in them, mm. they'll go in and see that. Suddenly that's been tapped into and they'll come out. Yeah. yeah. You know, they've got a bigger voice about sure. know, hate. Whereas before that sort of movies and that propaganda, it might have just been a little inkling in them. Yeah. You know? Quite possibly. Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. And that's what they're tapping into. Yeah. You know? But people who've already thought about that and dismissed that little inkling within them and said, oh, it's just me being silly. They'll go and see it and they're the ones who are the voice on the other side saying, no, that's ridiculous. Sure. You know? Yeah. Yeah. But maybe those people that say that it's ridiculous also have some sort of fulfillment and those that really get into it don't. Like... Mm. You know, I, th- I liken it to sometimes those real parochial one-eyed sporting fans. Mm. You know, they've got nothing to live for except for their team that's playing right, on yeah, the weekend. Yeah. And that's what gives them that's what gives joy them, in their life. Yeah, yeah. that's like the mm. only thing. They've, mm. They're missing a contentment and fulfillment mm. within them. So they source it from something else. And especially is to get angry. Whether they get angry at your, your team, the opposite doesn't team play well yeah, and... the, a player in the team or the umpires. Mm. They need that. Yeah. Well, it takes it out on a, exactly. something else. But... If you if you already have a certain level of fulfillment within you and contentedness, mm. you don't need that. You can you can enjoy you can enjoy it that game and of enjoy sport. Enjoy the spectacle, yeah. like a great game of footy. Like yeah, you know, we love our footy. I love footy. Yeah, but we I also enjoy watching both teams. We yeah, like seeing exactly. like I don't mind if my team loses. That's it. If but it's if a, I've good seen game, a good game, yeah, exactly. Because like, you know, I don't rely on that for my joy. No, life, you know, it gives me joy. Yeah. No doubt about it. It gives me joy when my team win. But if they lose, you know. Can't say yeah. I'm happy about you it. You don't have a team, do you, right now? Oh, Travis? yeah, my team's, my team's uh, no, they're all, they're, we're buying top-up players. That's <laughs> it, exactly. <laughs> hey, you want to play for them? I think they need Yeah, to, yeah all right, right, right. Cool. You just have to go down yeah, for a train. I'll give them a call and yeah, they'll probably thanks, recruit man. you, man. I'll get the boots out. Yeah, yeah. that's it. Um, do I have but, to take yeah. my own footy? What's that? I have to take my own footy? <laughs> yeah, that's it. They'll have no money left to buy footies, mate, no. all the fines. But, um, and that's it, you know, uh, it, it I have emotions like anyone else and I've put an emotional investment into my footy team. So when they win, I'm happy. When they lose, I'm not happy. But I'm not to the point where it's like, that's my whole week ruined, you know, yeah, because... I have to go home and beat my wife Yeah, now. exactly. <laughs> that's it. I have other other things to keep me fulfilled and I've got that joy in my life from other yeah. places, you know. You're a bit upset that they lost. You feel the boys' pain because they're obviously really, yeah. really upset when they lose. So you feel their pain. 
then you move on and you're like oh yeah. well, now time to get on with my day yeah you know? sure sure yeah and there's nothing wrong with that I think it's it's good thing to have a bit of emotional investment yeah, in something like that definitely. you know shows um, you're human exactly it, it, absolutely and that's what being human's about and me- investing our emotions into other people and that's what it, they're people they're playing footy and you invest that emotion mm. into them um, you ride every bump with them. You ride their their good times. You ride their bad times with them. And there's nothing wrong with that. Mm. The point when it gets wrong is when you get these fanatical supporters mm. saying that happens a lot in um, you know third world countries like in South America, where their entire week is about that game coming up. Yeah. And when they you know the team loses, they go and shoot the referee and all this sort yeah. of stuff because that's their entire life. That's they're in a country of poverty where they've got nothing yeah. joyful in their life and they haven't found anything because, I mean, while it might be more more difficult in those circumstances to find joy for some, yeah. you can still find joy. Yeah, if, sure. If that dude, I can't remember his name, who was in a Nazi concentration camp, found a way to survive through finding purpose and meaning in his life in a Nazi concentration camp, if mm. he can do that mm. under those circumstances, then... I'm sure, you know, if you're in a third world country, mm. you can do that as well. But can you, if you haven't been equipped with the, the resources, the skills, yeah. the knowledge to do it? Who, Who knows? knows? See, yeah. We can't judge from here. Exactly. But we've got our own problems. We've, oh, yeah. They've, it's all got, they've got those physical problems and lack of money and resources and housing or whatever. We've got mental problems up mm. here. Like the mental illness in Western society is huge yeah. because of the stress, the pressure. Consumerism. Yeah, consumerism. Have, yeah. And that's our battle. Materialism, you know? yeah. And we've got to fight that battle. Mm. So we have it just as hard as them, but in a different way. Sure. Know? They don't have that same sort of stress that we have up here. No, you know? no. Yeah. Theirs comes from elsewhere. But yeah, on this point of footy, you know, that's, that's we'll just finish that off, that they were... Um, it's not healthy either way no, <laughs> to no. go in that. But yeah. But what you were saying about the emotions, I think we can bring that around to the cacao. I think mm. what what's uh, um, a, a really good benefit of those cacao ceremonies, it really does bring all your emotions to the fore. Mm. Like, you really, just like you get hit. You by learn it, about them, and you yeah. have to be with it. Mm. Like, again, we, you know, a lot of what we were saying a bit earlier, we like to distract ourselves if mm-hmm. they do come up. But within a cacao ceremony, you've got like a blindfold. So it's meditating for two or three hours. Mm. Got an amazing soundscape. And you just have to be with it. Yep. You can choose not to if you want to. You can choose to like think about something else, but mm-hmm. that's not doing the work. No. Um, and a lot of the times, the emotions that come up from a cacao ceremony are so full on that you've got no chance but to be with it. You've you got to, to be, be with, with it. it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And you know what? It's... Well, it's uncomfortable. Like I found today a lot of periods which were uncomfortable because of the stuff that was coming up. And it wasn't anything particular. It was just old residue emotions. They yeah. had no event attached to them, no thought, no experience, no nothing. It was just pure raw emotion sure. coming up. And it was uncomfortable, but at the same time, it was beautiful because it was like, yeah, this is coming out of me. Great. Mm. I'm not going to be holding on to this anymore because once it's out, it's out. Yeah. And that was what was wonderful about it. So... I was very, I was embracing. I'm like, yes, I like, bring it on. I wish this would have come out ages ago, you know. Sure. But yeah, we get busy with work and we get distracted and mm. you know, we don't even get time to make that come out. But that's what's yeah. great about these ceremonies is you make the time. Yeah. The sure. time's there for you. Sure. And you allow yourself to do that. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. The the ceremonial aspect of life, I think, is definitely important. I think it's something we're rediscovering as mm-hmm. a, as a, um, especially in the Western world. Mm. As a species, I mean, we we can. It could be argued we do have it through uh, the monotheistic religions yeah, as well, religion, but you know, yeah. it's Sunday mass and, and things mm-hmm. like that. they're all ceremonies. Mm-hmm. Um, but if you're not into that, and if you, I mean, they're sort of based on another ideal. They're based on teachings of a, of another man and another uh, godhead or what have you. Mm-hmm. When you do a ceremony like a cow ceremony or ayahuasca ceremony, whatever mm-hmm. it might be, San Pedro, it's really just about you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's about nothing mm-hmm. else. Mm-hmm. It's about you mm-hmm. and your connection to the divine. Mm-hmm. And with no. And however you experience that. You know? yeah. Some people experience it as a mother, like Mother Ayahuasca. Some people experience Christ during it, you know? Mm. It's just however you see the divine. Yeah. You'll, you'll get an image which is a projection of yourself. Yeah. You project that. Sure. And it, you know, that's how you experience it, you know? Mm. Mm. Um, and I think that's wonderful. I think, you know? Yeah. If you can get a chance to ever experience that sometime I think all humanity should give that yeah, a go yeah definitely yeah and whatever form you'd like you know yeah yeah whether it's just a meditation with yeah, a local a meditation. Buddhist society yeah. or something where you can really just tune into mm. your own um, inner beliefs really that's it yeah. exactly um, yeah I was thinking on the um, 
our cra- like craving a connection. I think we spoke of that before in the heart, and we mentioned the the loneliness that's there. Um, one of the other things we crave, I think, as humans, is a bit of we all crave a bit of structure, and mm. the ceremony gives us that structure. Yep. There's a structure there. It's not just okay. Here, go meditate. There's a nice structure, and it's a discipline. Sure. And we mentioned military before. Which discipline. Is exactly, discipline. Yeah. You know, and that's that's a positive thing. You yeah. Know? People think sometimes, oh, you're telling me what to do and how to live or what to think. You know, there's always a negative connotation to that, but mm. there is a positive. Like people crave a discipline, a structure, sure. boundaries. Children crave boundaries yeah. just to know where you stand. And I think I had a little thought that that goes right to the core of our being. When we think of who we are beyond our humanity as spiritual beings, we're limitless. Mm. We're absolutely limitless. Mm. We see the infinite. We experience the infinite. Yeah. And maybe that's why we're even here as human beings, because yeah. we we the limitless was just too overwhelming. Sure. So we crave some structure. So as being spiritual beings, we created this reality with rules, with mm. laws, you know, like gravity and all this stuff. And we created this mm. so we'd have a way to experience consciousness with you know, boundaries around us. Sure. You know? Yeah. And yeah. I think in our hearts, which is pure consciousness, mm. we crave that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah we do mm. definitely. It's something we I think we've craved for a long period of time, but. Um, have we gone a bit overboard with it in today's society? Absolutely, I think so. I think, yeah, yeah. Th- you mean because we have become so accustomed to structure and being in comfort zones with it, I think a lot of us have forgotten how to embrace the unknown. Yeah. And that there's a big fear of that unknown now. Exactly. You know? Yeah. Maybe the fear was already, always there. Maybe that's yeah. why we created Probably this. Probably was, yeah. Because we Probably were afraid was. of that limitless. Yeah. And maybe the whole journey of life is to transcend that fear yep. so we can experience the infinite yeah you know yeah. just surrender to it completely surrender to the it's infinite, hardest you know? fucking thing to do yeah, though yeah. exactly so you know while those in power are constantly creating laws and rules and boundaries and regulations and all this structure to keep people comfortable and it probably it probably is a good thing because there are probably needed, people, people going crazy and committing crimes mm. and anarchy and whatever all other stuff they'd be doing so i think that structure is needed but once you search within and you're within your heart yeah you can learn how to live without that sure you know? yeah yeah definitely that, and not be afraid yeah exactly yeah, yeah i mean i've got a uh, i'm doing something at the moment which is uh we'll say it's illegal i'm i'm might may or may not be you know uh growing a certain thing oh those tomatoes yeah, yeah. tomato yeah. plants mm-hmm. some tomato plants are illegal but i've decided to grow one anyway yeah, and yeah. a lot of it the trust tomatoes. Yeah, yeah, yeah they've banned the, them over here. Those trust reason, tomatoes. I don't know why. Yeah, well, yeah, I don't know why they've banned well, trust tomatoes, but they have. They have, yeah. They're just natural things. They're good That's for great, you. Yeah, but there was it was a fear that prevented me from growing these trust tomatoes mm-hmm. originally. Mm-hmm. But and now I don't fear that anymore. Like I, I'm my own authority, it's and a, I'm yeah. I'm my. You own, make your own. Rules. You make your own the, boundaries and structure yeah. now. Yeah. If I'm the center of my yeah. little universe, yeah. that means. As long as things are done with morals and with ethics yep. and from a heart space, That's which right. is the way I'm growing these tomatoes, yep. then I don't have any guilt associated exactly. whatsoever. That's and it. who the fuck is someone to tell me mm-hmm. what I can, uh, cannot do? And you do? know what? In the, the Christian Bible, Jesus himself says that if you're righteous and you're living a righteous path, you don't need rules and laws okay. because you're already within yeah. what is required of you. Sure. And that's what you're doing. Yeah. You're, you can make your own rules because it's from here. Yeah. You're not breaking any rules that, you know, that the universe might have on yeah. you. You're not hurting anyone. Well, that's a thing. Yeah. Exactly. I'm not. And those mm. rules that are coming out, mm. um, affecting that um, ability for people to do that is com- are coming from here. Mm. That's they're right. The rules mm. that are coming from someone who... And they're based on fear. Based on fear. Yeah. And probably based on no experience at all. No. Like, exactly. like, well, they're not- whether it's mushrooms or any, any of yeah. those um, natural... No. Nah medicines that are illegal it's because that whoever's in authority saw that one idiot who is immature and inexperienced did that bloody substance and went and jumped off a bloody cliff yeah because he thought he could fly have you and heard then suddenly oh okay they're, they're bad make a ban them for everyone yeah you know have you heard bill hicks's uh no I, <laughs> what did bill, he say? bill hicks is like yeah. you know uh yeah so yeah someone takes psychedelics and they and he jumped off a um second second floor and he plummeted to his death yeah. Fucking idiot. I'm glad he's gone. If you <laughs> yeah. thought he could fly, you should just take it off from the ground. Yeah. <laughs> it's, like, it's true. That's right. It is true. Because you just got one or two people exactly. that a dumb, fuck it up. Yeah. A damn dumb, really. And then they made it illegal for him. But, you know, yeah. the thing is, it's a it's a plant. 
regardless of what we're talking about, it's it's here before we were here. Yeah. It's part of the earth. Yeah. It's life. It's natural. Mm-hmm. And when you grow these trust tomatoes or whatever other plant you might grow, you're nurturing something. You're yeah. raising a little infant seedling. Sure. To something beautiful and big and if you haven't got the right intention and the right love from here while you're nurturing that yeah it's not going to grow properly for you no you know mm. it's going to grow whatever you put into it from here is the quality of what you grow definitely you know? definitely yeah i oh, no doubt about it that's one of my favorite things about um i mean going back to normal vegetables of course i was talking about normal vegetables oh, in the first the place time. but you know, yeah. but you remember my veggie patch in Belmont, I think you mm-hmm. saw it a couple of times. I, I mean, the amount of love and, and care I put mm. into that. And this fucking veggie patch was like the boss and mm-hmm. because I, I put a lot of love and, mm-hmm. and attention into it. And it's such a um, fulfilling thing. Oh, I think everyone should do it. Everyone, everyone should, should grow, grow their veggies, own food. Yeah. yeah, it is a so fantastic thing to do. It's wonderful. And then, you know, you get so much of it, you know, you can give it to your friends, yeah. you eat it, and it just yeah. feel, you feel awesome when you eat your own veggies. Yeah. Oh, you yeah. just feel great. Definitely. And it tastes better. Yeah. Um, last year, I grew at my old house. I had a great veggie garden there for many years and decided to plant tons of chilies, tons of tomatoes. Mm. So it was just chilies and tomatoes mostly that sure. last year. And then I was able to make all these chutneys and chili yeah. pastes. Uh, we call the Killer Kip King. <laughs> and they're wonderful because yeah. you know that most of the ingredients in them are all out of your own garden yeah and they just taste wonderful yeah definitely yeah. man yeah mm. yeah and being able to give it away to people as well is a and really yeah. great thing to do that's just a heart it's a heartfelt thing you know? yeah. it's something that comes from the heart you're in the heart you're living in the heart when you're gardening sure I can, I can see why all the old people do it see that's a thing that's quite an easy way to get around a lot of people um, are against Monsanto and what they're doing mm. and you know genetic, genetically modified mm-hmm. food just the only thing, yeah, it's so, so easy to get around that. Just grow your own food. That's all you need to That's do. That's it. And share it with your friends. You might have an abundance mm-hmm. of uh, capsicum. Mm-hmm. So you swap it with your friend who's yeah. got an abundance of, ca- of it's carrots. It's easy enough. It's so easy. And, and, you know, if everyone just did, mm-hmm. you can even just grow one vegetable. You don't need a big plot of land yeah. either. And just could, share yeah. that amongst mm-hmm. everyone else. Share it, exactly, yeah. yeah. And you only need just a little garden. But if you live in a unit or something, just grow. You can grow herbs. Grow yeah. herbs in pots. You know, yeah. if you've got no yard whatsoever. Sure. But, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Or those you get those uh, miniature fruit trees now yeah. as well. You can grow them in pots That's like lemon good. trees and apricots and exactly. things like that. Yeah. No, I think it's a really, uh, really wonderful thing to do. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, keep this to so bring this back to the heart to what wind it up, eh? And, sure. Um, yeah, we've just finished on like gardening. I think mm. this whole conversation's gone. It's, we've tried to center it around the heart today. Um, whether we succeed or not, you could be the judge of that. We may go off on tangents, That's as it. you can already tell. But um, I think basically to conclude it all, we we mentioned it earlier. You, know, you live in the heart. It can be painful, and mm. it can be um, difficult, challenging. Um, but it's, you know, it's, it's the longest journey you ever take from head to heart. And yeah. it's the most beautiful and rewarding as well. Yeah. And you know you, you can work on your healing for however long. And then I think there comes a point in your life one time when you just realize, you know what? I'm, you know, I've pretty much done most of the healing that I'm going to do. And I'm, mm. I'm here. I'm in my heart now. And then what do you got left to do in life? Celebrate. Yeah. Just celebrate and just enjoy life. Sure. And live from here. Sure. And you're good. I'd add one thing to that mm-hmm. as well. I yep. think it's, uh, I don't know if responsibility is the right word. It's a happy responsibility, I call yeah. it, then to help others as well. Yeah, absolutely. Like if you get to that point, that's oh, what yeah. service is to me, is yeah. when you've been um, gifted through your own hard work as well, but generally it's mm. by the people that are supporting mm-hmm. you, mm. the ability to heal yourself and live from the heart, then it's like a, a natural thing to, yeah, firstly, mm. definitely enjoy mm. it. Like, oh, you enjoy like, it. And, you know, and w- you're enjoying it. And I think just when you're there, your presence and what you give and you, 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 I mean, I think what naturally comes with the territory when you're in your heart is you're naturally thinking of others all the time. Yeah, compassion. Empathy. Because I think that's there. Yeah. Because you realize you're feeling your connection at all times and you're always thinking of others. Sure. You're always giving to others. I think you can't be in the heart without having that, I think. Yeah, yeah. And so... Just, you know, you see someone in the street, like you said, you walk past 20 people, don't know any of them. But hey, sometimes you just walk past some stranger, give them a smile. Mm. You don't know, that could have such a long-lasting effect on that person. Yeah, definitely, yeah. Some stranger. 
Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Especially if someone is feeling disconnected yeah. or lonely, That's like we were it. talking about before, yeah. and all they need is a bit of warmth. Some people just need a fucking good hug as well. Yeah. Like, That's right. Yeah. You know, it's yeah. it's an important thing to be able to do to show compassion, empathy, and love to someone mm-hmm. else. It's the most challenging thing you can do, especially I think for a man as well. Oh, definitely. Like yeah. it's a pretty tough thing to do. Mm-hmm. And but once you do it, and you can, uh, and I try. I mean, I'm not. I'm not like a. Um, I'm not au fait with it. I'm not like really, really good at doing it. I do try, but I know I've got a long way to go. But when I do do it, it, it is difficult sometimes. But the benefit of, mm-hmm. of showing my uh, love and compassion to someone mm-hmm. else, really, the, the for me, the, the love and healing that comes from that is quite immense. Absolutely. And if everyone could do that, it's... Um, yeah, it's definitely something that can really help shift a lot of people's ideas and beliefs definitely. in themselves yeah. and the world in general. And you can't underestimate the power of just a little gesture. Yeah. It could go so far in someone's life. Someone could be just having a really rough trot. Yep. And just one genuine act of kindness, yeah. compassion, empathy or something where you show you've given a shit about that person. Yeah. Even if it's just a smile or yeah. a hug. Sure. That flow and effect could just change their life you just don't know yeah so always be kind well always. not just their life too travis but others as well they like the butterfly effect yeah, and exactly, you know, that yeah. con, um, concept of paying yeah. it forward i mean i yeah. still remember like 10 years ago like walking through the street and i mean this happened a fair few times but there's one particular moment where i was walking through the street of the perth you know just seeing random people as go past but there was one girl walking towards me and we just made eye contact made eye contact and just Smile, big smile. And I've done that heaps of times before, but for whatever reason, this one girl has stuck out in my mind forever. We just mm. walked past each other, eye contact, smiled, big smiles we walked past, and then she's gone. Mm. Never seen her again, or might have, I don't know. But mm. And that image is burnt into my brain, and sure. possibly hers too. Yeah. You know? And it gives you a good feeling. It does. Which you yeah. then can carry Seems on to true. other aspects exactly. of your life. Exactly. Yeah. You know? yeah. And sometimes, you know, when you might be having a down moment, I think I've had, I've, you know, you're thinking, oh, you know, people, people are shit. You know, you, and you get those moments where people have just been idiots, burnt you, whatever. Mm. And I've gone back to that moment. I think, you know what? No, they're not shit. Mm. Complete strangers can still be wonderful, like in that moment. Yeah, definitely. You know, and you draw on those moments yeah. in times when you're down. So always create them positive moments. It gives you something to draw on. It does, yeah, yeah. definitely, yeah. Very important aspect. And I think... Um going back to what we're talking about like with the connectivity and things like the internet that mm. the benefit of an advantage of that that um dynamic at the moment is we are able to really sink in with each other and and, and enjoy each other's company mm. even if it is through the ones mm. and zeros mm-hmm. you know, we can use it as a tool it's we a tool can. it's definitely a tool yeah. the old phone yeah exactly. it's a tool but we can use it for good or for bad mm-hmm. so i think it's a brilliant tool yeah. the only problem is um it's a, there's an addictive tendency to it, sure. it you know yeah. people can get addicted to it and you know there's that I mean you see I mean I see it when I'm driving my car and there's teenagers a lot you know they'll be sitting there waiting for a bus mm. and they get that agitated uncomfortableness mm. you know and we've all felt that I mean we probably would have done it in our day when we were teenagers but we didn't have mm. the phones you sure. know but they're looking for some security and that's their little security blanket yeah. bang out comes the phone they might not even be doing they might just be pressing random buttons yeah. and just you know oh my Facebook alerts I've got nothing there I'll check something else I'll check oh I'll play some Candy Crush now and yeah. they're just always they want to keep busy and that's their little security blanket it's a little bit of comfort and there's nothing wrong with needing that security it just you know it becomes a concern when that's always their focus yeah but we, uh, we've had ways of distracting ourselves before that, though. We with did. Books and magazines. Books, yeah. But you can at least... You grow from those, don't you? grow, yeah. yeah. And you can grow from things you see on the phone as well. Mm. Oh, absolutely. But when it's used as a tool. When it's used as a tool. Is everyone yeah. using it exactly. as a tool? Yeah. yeah, yeah. I saw a great... Um, it was funny. It was, it was a Facebook video that was going around, and it was brilliant. And I probably watched it on my phone, ironically. Um, <laughs> and it was... Um, there was a guy, and it was just heaps of people walking around on their phones, whatever. And um, then it had this guy, and he was walking along, and he bumped into this girl. And then he goes, oh, sorry. And you know, they, they got chatting on the corner, and then it just showed his life in Fast Forward. They went out on dates. Mm-hmm. Then, um, you know, they obviously they got together. They got married. They had kids. Um, he had lived a great life raising their kids. Then they, their kids grew up. Their kids had kids. And um, they just had this wonderful relationship. 
And then it showed him as a grandpa looking back at his photos of his grandkids and you know, everything, and just sitting there with a happy smile on his life. Then it rewound throughout mm. his whole life back to that moment where he bumped into her and it right. rewound back. And then it put him on his phone and he's walking along on his phone going, and he bumps into her. He goes, oh, sorry, back to his phone and walks off. Really? Yeah, And it right. just shows what he missed. Yeah, yeah. Isn't that brilliant? I thought it, it was is. so effective. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it is, isn't it? Yeah. Definitely. That's a really interesting thing. And it thing. just said, you know, you could miss a moment. Yeah. Yeah. But that's the, that's the, on the positive side of that, though. We have like a little um, time capsule on our hands now. Like that's and exactly it. We can like view yeah. out everything we've done over the last, what, especially with Facebook, over the last seven years mm. over, on this. Imagine another, when we all start passing away, you know, say we get to like in our 90s, we'll have like, you know, 50, 60 years worth of our memories on a yeah, little device like this. so much Or positives. whatever it might be, it'll probably be like a little well, implant. But yeah. we'll be able to access it any time. Absolutely. Yeah. Remember last year, Videos. Facebook brought that video out which said, oh, have a reflection on your year. Yeah. And it just showed photos from your year and it had a few little things and it said, thanks for the memories. And I thought, that's really nice. It is, yeah. yeah. That, there was a little bit of an uproar about that though as well, I remember at the time, because like people that are deceased and you know things like that. Mm. Like, and I, think, I don't think Facebook are going to do it next year. Yeah. Because it was... Very, yeah, it, it was a bit of sensitivity. It, it was sensitive. Yeah. Some people really um, mm-hmm. found it tough. But yep. uh, I mean, I've thought about it with this podcast. And I've been doing this for like almost two years now. Yeah, it's rocking on, man. Yeah, but mm-hmm. it's got like... Uh, I've got a snapshot of my life on video, like on it's actual great. conversation and you, of... You know, yeah. You know, and I can funny. see how I've changed you can see over how two years. Grown. Yeah. I mean, and, I saw and my that. friends as well. Yeah, exactly. I watched... Uh, you, know, you reposted episode one recently mm. and I watched a bit of that and I thought you know that changed so much from your recent episodes I mean there's you and Ross sitting there a bit nervous not mm. really knowing how this is going to all turn out and just this completely stepping into unknown territory and that was that was brilliant and it's yeah. really good to see that and compare it to now where you're confident you know comfortable this is what you do and mm. it's just a natural flow now you know? yeah it's just grown into this thing that's awesome yeah yeah, yeah. oh thanks man yeah, yeah. it's really cool yeah. I, I really think there should be more of it i really mm. think a lot more people should do some sort of form of medium like this where yeah. they can then um even if it's just for their own benefit really yeah. like just be able to then look back upon it look back and see can you, you know, imagine being done. yeah you know you're retired you're 70 year old 70 years old you're sitting back with you know a couple of your friends and you think oh you know Let's just watch an old Statira podcast yeah. episode. What See, was going on in the world what, in 2015? What was going on in the world? And yeah. more importantly, who was I back then? Yeah. How did I see the world? Again? Sure. And you, you'll probably think, wow, <laughs> I got a, that's an immature perspective on things. You yeah. know, it's 70 years old. Imagine, imagine how much we're going to have learned when we're 70. Oh, man. You that, know? That was one of the imagine things I mentioned in that post when I reposted yeah. it. It was like the, there was a certain level in myself of just naivety. Yeah. Like, but that wasn't through any fault of mine. I just hadn't learned oh, what, mate. I, what I know now. If we're not that was only here. two years ago. Exactly. If you're not looking back on yourself now, thinking you're naive back then, then you haven't grown. Yeah, exactly. You yeah. Know? I'd be a bit worried if I look back <laughs> thinking, oh, oh shit, geez. I'm exactly the same. Yeah, as well. or I knew more back then. Or I forgot <laughs> this stuff. <laughs> wow, this guy's onto it. Wow, yeah. why didn't I ever listen to him? Yeah. You know? <laughs> <laughs> You'd be very, very concerned. Yeah. Yeah. That's it, you know? Yeah. Yeah. All right. That's good. Nice, man. It was well, an awesome chat. Yeah, mm. definitely. I think, uh, yeah, we just covered some good range of topics here. Definitely. I think definitely the the heart spacing is something I think that's going to become more and more prevalent mm. with both myself and you and mm-hmm. a lot of the people that we're, um, we, uh, we, we hang out with. And mm-hmm. um, I think it's definitely a worldwide thing. And mm. it doesn't have to have a bad connotation of nah, uh, being for, for hippies that, you know, to talk about love. That's it. Anymore. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Because there's normal people talking about Love. it now. Yeah, yeah, that's it. And that's I think it's cool. It's things at the heart episode. <laughs> Maybe I'll take this last time. Oh, I love you, brother. Too. Love you too. Thank you. Good stuff, man. <laughs> um, I might have to do that for every podcast. Yeah. Hugs are good. Yeah, that's it. If you're watching this and you got someone next to you, give them a hug. Give them a hug. Yeah. Hugs are nice. That's it. Yeah. Nice. Uh, well, thanks very much, bro, yeah, for man. coming on here again. No, and, it's been you know, great chat. once again. Yeah, yeah, we'll definitely do more of them. For and, sure. You know, as soon mm-hmm. as we can get light up, we'll do them. Yep. And uh, yeah, we'll see you from there. Awesome. Uh, yeah, so, and thank you very much, else, for everyone. Um, thank you very much, else, for everyone. <laughs> thank you very much to everyone else. And uh, yeah, just uh, it's a real honor and real privilege to be able to really do this. I really enjoy it. Yeah. And uh, to get, you know, the, the big thing so. is about to get like some you know, incredible mm. friends of mine, like your good self in it. It's yep. just a real joy and I'm very yeah. honored. So uh, thank you very awesome. much for being on here. Wonderful to be part of it. Thank you. Awesome. And uh, yeah, again, thanks very much everyone and we'll see you next time. Bang. <laughs> <laughs> uh.
Mm. Thank you, brother. That's that good. was good. Good one. <laughs>